apologies, sorry, Phil. Uh, Dan Rowe, BBC News. Uh, a few months ago, you were reported as describing uh, the Saudis as scary. What did you mean by that? And if they're that scary, why are you here, given that they're bankrolling this tournament? Well, certainly, um, I've made, said and done a lot of uh, things that I regret, and uh, I'm sorry for that and for the hurt that it's caused a lot of people. Um, I don't, um, I don't condone human rights violations at all. I, I, I don't think it, I, I, nobody here does, um, any, throughout the world. And I'm certainly aware of what has happened with Jamal Khashoggi, and it's, I think it's terrible. I've also seen the good that the game of golf has done throughout history, and I believe that Live Golf is going to do a lot of good for the game as well. Um, and I'm excited about this opportunity. That's why I'm here. But isn't there a danger that you're also being seen as a tool of sports washing, an attempt to try and improve the image of a human rights abusing regime through sport, and that ultimately you could be seen as a Saudi stooge and, and that could tarnish your legacy? Is that, is that you comfortable with that? I, I said earlier, I, I don't condone human rights violations. I, I don't know how I can be any more clear. I understand your question. Um, but again, I love this game of golf. I've seen the good that it's done. And I see the opportunity for Live Golf to do a lot of good for the game throughout the world. And I'm excited to be about a part of this opportunity. Phil, you, you also spoke about leverage. You used the word leverage. And here you are sitting, representing the very people you were using to leverage. How do you explain that? I've, I've really enjoyed my time on the PJ Tour. I've, um, I've had some incredible experiences, some great memories. And I have a lot of strong opinions on things that should and could be a lot better. One of the mistakes I've made is, is um, voicing those publicly. So I will, I will really make an effort to keep those conversations behind closed doors uh, going forward. I think that's the way uh, to be the most uh, efficient and, and get the most out of it. Phil, can you just clarify, you've, you've apologized again just now. Can you just clarify what you're apologizing for? Is it you're sorry for speaking the truth about the Saudis? Or are you, are you sorry for the shameless hypocrisy of taking their money anyway? I, I understand that many people have very strong opinions and may disagree with my decision. Um, and I can empathize with that. Um, but... Um, at this time, this is uh, an opportunity that gives me a, a chance to have the most balance uh, in my life uh, going forward, and I think this is going to do a lot of good for the game. Phil, uh, can you tell me if you are serving a ban or have served a ban? I'm sorry, a say again. Can you tell me if you've served a ban or are serving a ban with the PJ Tour? I, I um, choose not to speak publicly on PJ Tour issues at this time. Okay. Can you say if you're going to play in next week's U.S. Open? I will play next week's U.S. Open. I'm looking forward to it. And if I can remind you, please state your name and your organization when you ask your question. Hiya, Phil. Uh, Rob Jones, Sky Sports. Um, you, you said something in um, a Sports Illustrated interview, and you, you just said it again this morning. What happened to Jamal Khashoggi is awful, but I've seen the game of golf, the good that the game of golf has done throughout history. No matter how successful this tournament could ever be, it can't counteract someone being murdered, can it? No, nobody here uh, condones human rights violations. And nobody's trying to make up for anything. Um, 
But the, you, you said those two statements, one after the other, which sort of implies that you feel that, that one can sort of make up for the other. And, and one of our colleagues used the phrase sports washing, and, and that surely is exactly what that's an attempt to do. There are... Um, the, the game of golf, I've seen unify and bring people together. And um, I love that I'm a part of this sport. I love that um, this, this game has given me so much. And it is fun for me to give back and to bring this game on a global, throughout the world on a global scale and the opportunities that Live Golf provides. And I don't know how else I can say it. I don't condone human rights violations. Nobody here does. Um, I don't know how else to say it any more uh, assertively. Bill, um, Riyath Al Samurai, Daily Mail. Um, you were talking about this being good for the game of golf. The general perception is that this is all about the money. Um, money for the players. Can you can you comment on that? What are your what are your thoughts? I don't necessarily agree with your premise, but I think that the um, opportunity that it provides me to play, compete, bring the sport throughout the world, play less have a better balance in life on and off the golf course. I know that it gives me um, a lot of positives uh, personally and professionally, and I believe it does the same for everyone else in the field. Hello, Phil. Martin Lipton from The Sun. A number of your tour colleagues have been critical of you. Uh, can I ask how you responded to some of those criticism? And another one said you'd gone dark during your period off the Let, course. Let's keep it one question at a time. Okay. Well, I'll, what was your first one? Yeah. How do you respond? How did you feel when colleagues of yours criticized you so publicly, given that you knew them? So I understand how many people are going to have very strong opinions on this, my peers included. Um, I respect their opinions. Um, I can empathize with their, their, uh, their feelings. And I'm appreciative to the, the many peers that have reached out to me and shown their support as well. Um, my second question is, it was said by one of your colleagues that you've gone dark, whatever that means. But what have you done for the last four months? Because no one's seen you. I have had an awesome time. I've had a, a four-month break from the game that I have not had in over three decades. I've had an opportunity to spend time with, with my wife, Amy, a, 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 a bunch and travel parts of the world and spend time at a place we have in Montana skiing and hiking Sedona. What a beautiful place that is. It's given me a time to um, continue some of the work and therapy that I've been working on on some areas that I'm deficient in my life. It's given me time to reflect on what I want to do going forward, what's best for me, what's best for my, the people I care about. And this is an opportunity that allows me to still have golf in my life, but also have a balance where I can be more present, um, I can be more engaged with the people I really care about. And that is that is why when I think about being a part of Live Golf, I feel so good about it. Rick Broadbent from the Times Felt. Um, do you feel you've got a future on the PGA Tour and do you even want one now? I have been a part of the tour for over 30 years and 
I've had a lot of incredible memories that have been formed and experiences that I've shared, um, tournaments that I've won and been a part of, tournaments that I've lost and been a part of. I also, uh, and I've gained a lot, I've received a lot from the PJ Tour. I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful for everything the PJ Tour and the game of golf has provided for me and my family. Um, I've also worked really hard to contribute and try to build and add value to the tour during my time there. And I worked really hard to earn a lifetime exemption. And um, I, 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 I don't want to give that up. I don't believe I should have to. I don't know what that means for a future, but um, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but I've earned that, and um, I don't plan on just giving it up. Hi, Phil. Uh, Ian Carter from BBC. When, when your comments to Alan Shipnut were made public in February, how much of a turning point did they prove in, in your life? How much of a, a jolt was it to you? Because clearly you, you disappeared from public life, and, and I, I just wonder you know, what you've gone through in, in that process over and above, obviously, the travels that you've described. So I shared with you all that uh, most of what I've done during that time and um, uh, regarding anything with Alan, I really don't have any comments at this time. 